there's been an awakening. Like you didn't expect that. Come on, really? It's, a, it's interesting to think about it, though, for a moment. Mary left with haste in those days. In those days, Mary left with haste. And what are those days? What just happened? She got visited by an angel, and the angel's name was? Gabriel, and Gabriel told her, what? You're going to have a baby. Okay, let's get a little bit of perspective here. How old was Mary? Like 14. So, 14 year old girls, stand up. I have two, I have two 13 year old girls, stand up. Oh, there you are. I was like, I know I saw Jaden earlier. I didn't see. Okay, you can sit down. This is the age Mary would have been. And she gets visited by an angel, and the angel says to her, You're going to have a baby. I see all the dads like, <laughs> Excuse me? But think about that for a moment. If you were 14 and you got visited by an angel and you were told you were going to have a baby, what would be the first thought that went through your mind? I'll be at peace and I will say that God is going to be with me always, right? That's the way that it's going to happen. (laughs) Whatever is going to happen, let it be God as you have proclaimed. Yes, that's exactly what Mary did and that's what what any 14-year-old girl would do if that's what happened. And then she decides she's going to take off and go see her cousin. And why? That's the big question. There's no reason why she should go see Elizabeth. The angel didn't tell her to. She might not have even known that Elizabeth was pregnant. I mean, she might have, but she might not have. But she leaves with haste. Secondly, a 14-year-old girl in this time frame would never go anywhere alone. She wouldn't go walking around the village to do window shopping alone. Someone would go with her. Right? She's going 70 miles away to visit her cousin. And according to the Bible, she does it alone. There's no reason for this trip at all. But yet Mary does it because there's been an awakening. Something's going on. When Mary enters the house, what happens to, to John? What does John do? John did what? He leaped for joy. Elizabeth said, when, when my baby inside my womb heard the voice of my Lord be, being here, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And it's interesting, this word for leaped is used only twice in the New Testament. And it's used in Luke. It's used twice here in our verse, here, in verse 41 and verse 44, where it says, And the baby in her womb leaped for joy when it heard the voice of the mother of our Savior. And then she says, And the baby leaped in my womb. And it's used by Luke later in the Beatitudes when he says, Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. It's also used... In the Old Testament, the Greek version of the Old Testament, in Genesis chapter 25, where Esau and his brother wrestle in the womb. They struggled. The twins struggled together in the womb. So my question is, how? what is the difference between twins struggling in the wombs, a baby just kicking, or Elizabeth actually understanding that John leaped for joy when he heard the voice of Mary. How do you, how do you know that? 
And, and the, the women would have to answer this question more than the men, really, because the men, we, we have absolutely no clue here at all about something happening and jumping up and down inside of us. So, but how do you know the difference? You just know. And that's it, right? This, this waiting that we're in, this period of Advent, this, this time where we're waiting on Jesus to come and be with us, and Mary, when she finds out, says to the angel something that only half of us could ever hope to get close to, that whatever God wants to happen in my life, let it happen. Because trust me, I've come to the, to the conclusion of saying that several times, but you can ask my wife, it took a long, hard road to get there, and it was windy, and, and it went up and down different hills. It's not an easy thing to say to God, God, you do whatever you want to with me, and I'm going to be happy and follow you. It's a hard thing. Mary just did it. And she went to go visit her cousin, and when she did, that baby leaped, and Elizabeth knew that that baby leaped because she knew what God had promised to them. And even without having ever seen Jesus or understanding everything that He told us and being in the position that we are, she still knew the promises and knew that it was going to be because she understood God was with them all the time. And that's it. You see, we say we're waiting for Jesus to be born. But the fact of the matter is Jesus is already here. And yes, we're waiting on a baby who's going to come. And we're waiting on our Savior who's going to return to redeem us and make this place be the perfect world that God has created it to be. But in that time of waiting, we can be waken, awoken to know that God is always in and around us. Because it wasn't a coincidence that that baby just moved at that point in time. Some people say they don't believe in coincidences. There's no, and I would say there's no such thing as a coincidence. It's a God incident. Because God creates things and allows things to happen in our lives that remind us and show us constantly that He is always with us. There's been an awakening. Have you felt it?